Hello, everyone. This is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I, the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. Well, CD Projekt Red shot itself in the foot really, really hard today. Um, of course, like over the past couple of weeks, they've been doing a big media blitz. They announced a bunch of new Witcher projects. They announced a new cyberpunk game. They've been trying to like rebuild their reputation. They hired, they hired a bunch of Indian shills to come onto 4chan and like pretend that like cyberpunk is good now. There is like a lot of... There is a very big, blatant attempt to try and get people talking about, like, cyberpunk again. However, before this could go anywhere, they completely ruined all momentum they might have had by making a video that I think nobody really saw coming. Them publicly, publicly acknowledging the ESG system <laughs> and how they were trying to uh, to fit in with, like, the demands of, like— um, the World Economic Forum, or whatever the fuck it is. I am not an expert on, like, uh, the EGS system, okay? I'm not, like, I've heard of it. I have, like, an idea of what it is. Like, it's essentially, like, a board of people who dictate, like, what companies cannot, can and cannot do. And, like, uh, depending on, like, how good their score is, they... Uh, they get like more, better, better. They get access to better loans and stuff like that. Things that like, companies need to stay active. It is apparently the method in which. Uh, well, first of all, how companies that go woke can prevent going broke by just having like m the ESG that kind of step in and like fund fund their projects. Uh, this is why Saints Row, which I think is like the first example of like an ESG funded project, uh, could completely blom. But like the CEO, like obsessively like defended it right because like he knew this was uh, this was a project that existed to like raise the esg score right so we we've uh, we've seen that uh that aspect of it oh fuck where was i going shit there's so much to talk about i don't feel like i understand the entire concept all that well but uh, essentially what it amounts to i think is that like every video game company is going to be encouraged by the ESG to like push wokeness in their games. And I think this is probably a big reason why we over the past couple of years have seen like an increase of like woke content in Nintendo and other video game companies, right? Of course we have like the Bridget is a tranny thing, which is complete nonsense. Uh, you have like uh, weird localization choices and then you have like weird stuff like um <sighs> Just some of the some of the care, just some of the uh, decisions these companies have made, right? Like it seems like they're not made to appeal to consumers. They're appeal. They're made to appeal to like the the diversity to to raise their diversity score, essentially. And uh, I do think this is probably how they're trying to influence Japan is that they they've stopped trying to send people over there and like infiltrate the teams because that's just not going to work they're uh, they're just going to straight up make the executives like at, uh, push for this nonsense themselves in order to raise their score and I'm not sure how this is going to work because I think it's like very clear immediately that like this kind of stuff is just not going to make the products appealing like essentially what the ESG score seems to be trying to do is that they're trying to replace entertainment and turn it into propaganda. But like the thing is, uh, people are averse to propaganda and are like outright rejecting it. Like The Last of Us Part Two, like in spite of how beloved the first game was, as ill deserved as that was, uh, it did bomb. Like it did, it did do poorly. Like Saints Row, it did do poorly. Uh, I think, I do think, uh, essentially, there are a handful of franchises that are going to do well no matter what. Like the biggest franchises in the world, you know, stuff like Grand Theft Auto, stuff like Pokemon, stuff like that. For the vast majority of stuff, though, like going woke is going to like destroy its credibility among its core audience, right? Like I myself have been kind of kind of speaking out against like Fire Emblem and like they're supposed it's supposed like attempts at normalizing homosexuality, like which, which really isn't the case, by the way. That, that's one of the weird things I noticed when I played Fire Emblem Three Hopes is that they they seem to have like elaborated on Edelgard's sexuality and apparently she's not actually bisexual, which. Which shocked me, considering that's one of like the most popular aspects of the character. That's not the reason I love the character, by the way. But uh, for, for like normies, uh, for for the scum of the earth, for like the woke crowd, like that's kind of like the most talked about aspect of the character. Yeah, it's not actually true, and and it's weird to me that they would like. There are so many like female characters in Fire Emblem Three Houses that are so obviously heterosexual that the that they pretend are like that the 
that specific lines of dialogue like imply that they might be by it just it's just weird you know it, does, it doesn't make any sense and, and it feels like forced and fake as fuck in a lot of cases right like and uh I, I think this might be why is that is that like they're being pressured to to include this kind of stuff to raise their esg score and to me I, i'm just i'm just curious like well is there pushback to this is there any real like is there any real like uh, rebellion in regards to the ESG system? And I think there must be because um, you either don't know what the ESG system is or you hate it, right? Like the um, that CD Project Red video, overwhelming dislikes, right? Like nobody liked it, right? <laughs> like it really, it really pulled back the curtain on like what's going wrong at at CD Project Red or right now and. A lot of people are bringing it up when it comes to like the the current situation there and why it's never going to recover because they are focusing more on this uh, on this woke stuff instead of like actually making good video games. And uh, I get it. It's like what I what I said. They're going to like milk their most profitable brands, Witcher, and like run it to the ground uh, essentially. And it's not really possible to do that. I think. Like I don't think they're ever going to have another Witcher three. Like I, I, I've been talking about this since 2000, 2015 or probably even earlier. But like CD Projekt Red essentially only became relevant because like nobody else was putting out good games, right? They had like a team that was like, you know, that came together, that was passionate about what they were doing and made something that appealed to like normies, right? And then like that team immediately disbanded. And then they had to deal with the fact that, like, oh, yeah, uh, hired a bunch of diversity. And uh, now we got Cyberpunk 2077, like a complete shit show um, that there are people defending Cyberpunk. But at the same time, like, these are the people who will defend anything. Right. Like Noah Antweiler, uh, the Spoonie one, is playing Cyberpunk right now. And it, he, this is one of the guys defending um, Lords of Power. This is one of the guys defending like Star Wars Episode Eight. Right. This is the guy. This guy is a huge sellout, right? That, that's the kind of person that are defending these kind of projects. Like, they're not actually fans. They're not actually players. They're not actually consumers. And as a result of that, like, you can't take anything they say seriously. So, um, honestly, I don't think you can maintain a company based on your ESG score. Because, like, if nobody buys your product... It's not propaganda because nobody is consuming it. Like it's not effective propaganda. People did not buy Saints Row unless like specifically to make fun of it. But like that's going to be like um, a thing that dies down as a uh, – that's going to be a mindset that dies down as um, as these re releases become more and more frequent. Like people are just going to ignore them. Uh, I, I'm ignoring a lot of farming sims right now because of, of how bad they've gotten right with some of this stuff. I um, – there are – it seems it, – I, 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 I genuinely think there is a lot of pushback to this kind of stuff. I don't think it's going to work. I think, uh, I think this was done in retaliation for the failures of, of, of projects like Ghostbusters 2016, right, where they tried, like, pushing, like, the all-female angle. Like, like there has been too many, like, notable big big-budget bombs that really tried pushing woke shit. And uh, this is their attempt at re uh, remedying that to prevent people from like going going broke if they go woke. That's that's kind of my that's kind of my thought on it. Uh, we might, as I learn more about the uh, the idea of this, we might ha I might have to like remedy my opinion and talk about it more. Like I said, I'm not an expert or anything, but like even I know this is not a good thing.